Hi, I'm Andy Glass with WorkshopAddict.com. Today we're going to take a look at the Saw Stop Professional Cabinet Saw, model number 31230. Now this video isn't going to be full of specs, and if you're interested in seeing some of those, visit WorkshopAddict.com or SawStop.com. We're going to go ahead and look at the saw itself, some features, things I like, things I don't like. Then we'll dive into the saw stop technology. We'll actually set this saw off three different times. And then when we're done with that, we'll go ahead around to each individual upgrade and accessory that I have for this saw. Now this is a lot to cover, so I have a little cheat sheet down here. So bear with me if I'm looking down every now and again. Okay, to start out, I've had this saw for approximately two years and I absolutely love every single second of it. There's some things that I like a whole bunch or some things that are pretty standard on table saws and then there's some things I'd like to change. So let's go ahead and start out with uh, the arrival, packaging, assembly, etc. Um, the saw came together along with all the accessories. Uh, it, it they were packaged very, very well. They arrived freight to my house in uh, Bismarck, North Dakota. Um, we now live in Fargo, North Dakota. But the packaging was phenomenal and the instructions were even better. Um, saw stop, I don't know who you guys have uh, doing your packaging and instruction work, but you need to give them a raise because they did a phenomenal job. Um, when I'm overlaying some footage here of my wife and I uh, setting up the saw in my old shop, um, but it was a breeze. It, it took some time, but that's just because it needed to take time to assemble the saw. Uh, but everything had its perfect label. Um, the instructions were easy to read and the parts, bolts, screws, all that stuff were in their own separate compartment and it was extremely easy. The, the direction said grab purple compartment labeled 3A, you'd grab it, you'd do the job and then you'd move on. So super, super easy on that. Uh, the construction of the saw is phenomenal. Um, understand that it is a saw stop, it has saw stop technology which we'll get to in a little bit. Um, but if this saw did not have the saw stop technology, I would have no doubts, no reservations to buy this saw for the quality it is. Now you add the saw stop technology, yes that adds expense, expense. the saw is not cheap, but these are not cheap either. These are priceless to me, so I want to keep my fingers, I want to keep everything attached to my body, and this saw definitely helps um, with that. Um, the appearance of the saw, the saw is, is beautiful. Uh, it's very well made, it looks great. The powder coating, uh, the anodizing, all the stuff um, on the metal, uh, everything is great. The cast iron is um, perfectly flat, uh, it, it, or not, I shouldn't say perfectly flat, I don't know the tolerances of it, but in my realm uh, for woodworking, it is definitely flat. Um, this saw that I have here is the three horsepower model. It's single phase. 230 volts and it has a 13 amp motor. Um, this saw can come in a um, uh, one and three quarter motor. Now my old saw was a one and three quarter hybrid uh, contractor saw. And I would occasionally run into issues with the saw being underpowered. I switched to thin kerf uh, blades on that saw and that helped a whole bunch. But I knew when I upgraded to my saw, it was gonna be much higher than um, one and three quarter horsepower. Uh, three quarter horsepower was uh, sufficient for what I'm gonna need. If you wanna go up to five horse, you have to go to their industrial cabinet saws. Um, but I, did, I felt my work and uh, the frequency of me ripping some seriously thick stock um, didn't warrant uh, upgrading saws. Um, this saw is powered, uh, it's a left tilting saw. It's five eighths arbor. It, on this saw here, I have the 36 inch fence. Now in my old shop, I did not have a whole lot of room, so um, I had to opt for the 36 inch model, uh, fence model. Um, I do a lot of plywood work and sheet good work. So if I could, I would have gotten a 52 inch uh, rip capacity, no questions asked. I did not have the room for that. In this new shop here, uh, I may eventually upgrade. Blade changes on the saw, that's something before I pulled the trigger on this saw itself, I thought about the saw stop technology, the cartridges, the blades, um, just that whole process with the dado blades and all that stuff, and I'm not gonna lie, it was a reservation. It, 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 it slowed down my thought process a little bit on actually purchasing the saw, but after using the saw, Blade changes are absolutely easier 
on this saw than any other saw that I've personally used. And that's two things. They use two different size wrenches for the saw. One, the arbor wrench is a different open-ended wrench, and the uh, closed end of the wrench is for the nut. They're two different sizes, so you know when you grab either wrench, they're offset as well, so that's really nice. You don't have to rub your knuckles, but they're offset, and you can't mix up the sizes of the wrench because you know that the uh, closed circle has to be on the nut, and the open-ended wrench has to be on the arbor. So they thought of a lot of things when designing this saw and putting it out there. Um, the throat insert is extremely expensive uh, in, the, in the realm of being able to build your own like I did for my old shop or my old saw. Um, but they, they're very well made. They're locking. They have a lever that locks them in. And you can buy some non-saw stop accessories that have replaceable throat inserts for zero clearance and all that stuff. Um, and dado stacks and whatnot. So some other companies are coming out and being innovative with that, and so hopefully that'll drive down the costs a little bit. Uh, but you cannot make, or I shouldn't say that, you can't easily make your own blade or your own uh, throat insert for this saw. The riving knife, I did not have a riving knife on my old uh, contractor saw or hybrid saw or whatever you're gonna call it. Um, this is a floating riving knife, which means it goes up and down with the blade, and it is absolutely a snap to put in and out, lift a lever, pull it out, put it back in, push the lever back down. There's absolutely zero excuse not to use this riving knife when you have the ability to. There may be certain situations where you can't use the riving knife, um, but when you can, there's no doubt you should use it, and it's so easy, you have no excuse not to. Let's go ahead and take a look at the saw stop technology. Uh, the flush sensing technology which makes the saw stop a saw stop. It's obviously in their name. Um, basically your body uh, produces a little bit of electricity and when you make contact with the blade it completes the circuit and causes uh, the brake to set off. There's a charge in the brake which sends this uh, precision milled aluminum uh, brake into the blade causing it to stop in literally milliseconds and it gets flipped down and thrown into, uh, or the, the centrifugal force pulls the blade underneath the table, preventing you from um, continuous damage to your fingers. Now, I set this brake off three different times today uh, using the hot dog method, and before that I had zero face-to-face uh, -face or real-life experience with this saw getting set off. The first time, it was a very violent reaction. I was kind of shocked. Uh, uh, popped up. I had the earmuffs on, which you typically should when you're running your saw, but it was, it was startling. Now, uh, I did it the second two times, and it wasn't a big deal. I knew it was coming, granted, um, but it, uh, I almost kind of recommend a brand new saw stop user to set it off just so they can be prepared for it, but I know uh, it, does, um, it does cost money. And in order, the reason it costs money is when that blade gets thrown in, or that brake gets thrown into the blade, it not only roots the blade, but you have to replace the brake. Now, the very first time I replaced the blade and brake after it was activated, I struggled a little bit, um, but I ended up figuring out that you needed to use a um, long reach flathead uh, screwdriver to simply pry off the brake and get a little leverage down there, um, but it came out no problem. I literally changed it, not knowing how to do it, in probably five minutes or so. Um, so that's very, very impressive. Uh, this is a 10 inch table saw, so it takes a 10 inch blade. Uh, this saw must use eight inch dado stack blades. Uh, it cannot use six uh, or anything larger or smaller as the brakes that are designed are for eight inch dado stacks. Now I have not set off a dado stack in this, um, but that would be a very interesting test. Now the saw stop may provide, it obviously provides safety and a, a level of comfort around your saw, but I can't stress enough that you cannot get complacent with your tools. Even though there's a level of safety there um, that helps you prevent it, you still have to respect the tool, you still have to stand where you need to do, still use a push stick, still use all your safety equipment, um, but that saw stop is there. It's a good peace of mind where when there's a millisecond lapse of judgment on your part, you're gr grabbing for a blade or you can't see it or something wrong, um, you know that saw stop's gonna be there to, to help protect your digits and keep them on your fingers.
It's expensive when you set off the saw stop technology. You lose your blade and your brake. But like I said earlier, these fingers are priceless and I'll spend quite a bit of money to keep them attached to my hands. Now there's alternative uh, um, options for flush sensing technology, um, not in a cabinet saw, but uh, those options save the blade. They basically push the blade out of the way. Um, so it's good and a bad, but regardless, I'm glad to pay a couple hundred bucks to keep my fingers on my hand. The saw stop technology will get set off with uh, occasional wet wood if it comes in contact with metal um, or uh, you accidentally catch your miter gauge or something like that. It will set off this uh, brake system or flush sensing technology. Anything that is conductive, if you're touching it and you um, touch a piece of metal, it's going to set it off. Now you can put the saw in bypass mode by turning a key and then flipping on the saw, it will bypass the saw stop technology. So if you would like to cut aluminum T-track or um, something that potentially could set this off and you don't want to risk ruining a blade and ruining a cartridge, um, definitely put it in bypass mode, but be very wary that that now safety blanket is not active on the saw. Before we get into the accessories, um, I really, really, really like this saw. This saw is very well built, like I said earlier. Um, everything is overbuilt, it seems. This is the professional cabinet saw. They do have the industrial cabinet saw, which is one level above, and then they have their um, uh, job site saw, which is mobile, um, but still equally impressive. Hopefully we'll get our hands on one of those to uh, bring that review to you guys as well. The miter gauge is on the right-hand side of the saw in a nice little carrying um, spot. And the dust collection on this saw is phenomenal. There is a four inch port on the back that connects um, to a tube and a shroud right around the blade. So uh, dust collection is superb. And then when you add the overarm dust collection to it, it is even better. Uh, the motor is on the left hand side of the unit. Uh, there's a protective uh, shroud around the motor that can simply be pushed out of the way if you do need to access the inside of the saw. Uh, which is really nice to be able to, to quickly do that. Pertaining to the accessories and upgrades that I put on this saw, we'll go ahead and start out with the T-Glide 36 inch rip fence, model number TGP236. Now my thought process behind this is when I use a table saw, the fence is typically the most used item on the saw. Every time you want to make a cut, or almost every time, you're going to need your rip fence. So when there is an opportunity to upgrade and get something better, uh, it was a no-brainer for me. Now, I cannot speak for the factory fence on this as I have not seen it. They shipped this with the upgraded T-Glide fence. Uh, again, this is a 36 inch rip fence capacity on this and highly recommend it. Uh, this T-Glide uh, fence upgraded system has the cursors on both sides and uh, it's phenomenal. I like it a lot. Next, we'll look at the industrial cabinet saw mobile base, model number MB-PCS. Dash IND. Now this mobile base is made for the industrial cabinet saw, but they do have a conversion kit that allows you to put it on their professional cabinet saw or PCS models. Now it relies on a hydraulic uh, ram lifting system to where you simply pump it up and it lifts the entire saw off the ground uh, so you can lift it and, and move it around exactly where you need it. Now I try to put everything in my shop on wheels to uh, move it to be able to clean it, to rearrange the shop just to have that flexibility. So having a mobile base on my saw is a must and being able to upgrade into the industrial um, mobile base um, just made sense to me as well. Now two things I have issues with every now and again with the industrial mobile base is when I pump it up all the way, it, it sometimes lifts up one end uh, on the, on the uh, right hand side when you're actually facing the saw and the left hand side doesn't come up as high but still comes off the ground. Uh, I still can roll around the saw just fine, but it seems to kind of lift everything at an angle. I'm not sure if the installation was wrong um, or if that's just the design feature. Uh, the second problem I have every now and again is when I lift the saw all the way up, I move it around, and to simply lower it, you press down on the lower uh, tab of the hydraulic um, uh, uh, pump or mechanism, whatever you want to call it, and the saw will lower. Sometimes, every now and again, it will not lower all the way and I'll have to pump it back up and kind of put my weight on it. So I'm not sure if it kind of gets hung up up there or the bleed down on the hydraulic pump is just slower. 
um, or whatnot, but easy fix, I figured it out. Maybe uh, that's just a design flaw, or again, there could be something on my end, but that's the personal experience I've had with the industrial cabinet saw mobile base. Now again, it's a conversion from the industrial cabinet saw to the professional cabinet saw. I have the overarm dust collection on here, model number TSA-ODC. Um, I don't use this a whole lot due to having to film my projects. Uh, it's, it's not very attractive or aesthetically pleasing to watch a video with a dust uh, and uh, protective device over the blade. People want to see it. So, But when I do and I'm not filming, um, if, if there's any large projects and things, I'll put this on. It's so easy to switch back and forth from the riving knife to the overarm dust collection uh, large protection. The dust collection on this thing is phenomenal. Uh, it's designed to where it completely wraps around the blade is adjustable if you're doing a cleanup cut to or not it's it's self adjusting to where if you're doing a cleanup cut one side's going to stay down the other side's going to come up um, so it performs very very well there's uh, two anti kickback uh, bars or spikes on the sides to help prevent kickback um, but I do find this an issue when I get the fence close to this I find it a little cumbersome and a little bit dangerous as I can't see the blade, um, I, it, maybe my push stick uh, starts catching on things, I'm not sure, but um, i just not a big fan of having it on when the rip fence is close to the blade. I use it a ton when it's far away or large cuts and things like that. Cross cut sliding table. Um, this was a luxury, I did not have a room, room for it in the last shop to fully utilize its capabilities. In this shop, I will, as I have a ton of room to the left-hand side of my blade. Um, I love and hate this uh, accessory. Uh, I'm on the fence about buying it again um, because I use a lot of sheet goods. I have the ability where it's set up right now, it's in a configuration that I can cross-cut full four-foot um, sheets of plywood, and I do it very well. The issue with that is the way it mounts, um, the way the uh, miter, or excuse me, the, the fence itself adheres to the table, it's not incredibly accurate or repeatable. The fence system does not have positive sops. You have to put it on and you have to square it to the blade every single time. If it had positive stops to where you could lock it in at 90 or 45 or something like that, it would be a different accessory altogether. So saw stop, if you're listening, check that out. Um, maybe there's a design feature on why you don't have that, um, but I'm not privy to that information. I really like the fence system with its construction. They're built very well. The sliding table is very smooth. It can be configured in multiple different uh, configurations, um, depending on if you want it sticking out for the full four feet or if you want it up and have it flush with the front of the table. Uh, the fence system is, or the fence itself is made extremely well. I love the construction of the, um, the stops, the extension, all that stuff is made very well. Would I buy it again? Um, on, honestly, it's probably a maybe because um, that, that may change going forward and now that I actually have the room for it and I can utilize it. Um, so we'll see. I, I got to keep my answer to maybe. Lastly, it's not a big upgrade. It's something everybody should buy when they buy the, a saw stop or any saw stop is the dado cartridges model TSDC-8R2 and then also the dado insert with locking lever model TSI-DLD. This uh, dado cartridge and dado insert allows you to utilize the 8 inch dado stack on your saw stop while maintaining the protection and um, safety blanket of the saw stop technology. There's a lot of information to cover. There's a lot of, um, there's, there's definitely way more positives with this saw. There's a few negatives um, that, uh, like I said, I experienced with it. Um, if I missed anything, you have any guys' questions, comments, or concerns, leave them below, um, and I'll do my best to answer them. Visit workshopaddict.com. We have a blog and a form. Follow us on social media for updates. Um, on project as well as future tool reviews. I'm Andy Glass with Workshop Addict. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.